Welcome back to Silver Nugget Adventure and the Exploring the Nugget playlist. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the information screen in the center of the dashboard. A lot of you have asked about the various menus and we'll walk through those today. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so let's begin the deep dive. We're going to be mainly concentrating on this information panel which sits smack in the middle of the dashboard between the two dials. So if I insert the car keys now, the first thing that comes up is the number of miles that we've completed in the vehicle. And as we turn the ignition, the main menu wakes up. So there are several menu options and I'll quickly flick through these by pushing up or down on the central joystick on the right hand side of the steering wheel. So if I move through we've got navigation, we've got the driver assist screen, we've got my view which can be tailored to whichever you'd like to see, we've got the trip computer which gives some statistics, we've got our settings page, We've got phone and audio options, and then we're back to navigation. So I think it's worth just explaining a little bit about each screen. I don't want this vlog to last too long, so I'm gonna keep it quite brief, and if you've got any questions or queries, you can pop them down in the comments below, and of course, we can talk in more detail at a later stage navigation section so here at the moment it's just showing you the compass but if i press the menu button i now go into the next menu which shows our options so i could simply choose to navigate home some previous destinations your favorites and of course any points of interest similar to other sat nav systems but what's quite useful this shortcut menu means we don't have to be reaching across the cab to the other display in the center so it's good for shortcuts for example here you might look for some food local fuel accommodation or parking um, whatever you require and of course as with each menu you push the return button which will bring you back through the screens and back to the main page driver assist this is simply allowing you to look at which of the driver assist options are turned on or off and will allow you to control some of them as you can see the ford nugget this particular version is f fully stacked with pre-collision assist, traffic recognition, lane keeping system, and driver alert system. Also eco coach, which are messages that can come up and just advise you on when you could be saving fuel and cruise control, and then your speed limiters. So if I take each in turn, starting at the top pre-collision assist press ok and now i've got some options so i can choose the distance the sensitivity whether whether we've got active braking indicated for the traffic sign recognition of course that's as it says on the tin really and you can get it to turn it turn it on or off and you can get it to warn you if you're going too fast um, lane keeping system um, so you've got different options here. So for the driver assist, you could just have it to alert you. You can have it to help you, or you could have it to alert and help you. And you can have their sensitivity as high, normal, or low. And you can uh, and you can just adjust then uh, how sensitive the whole system is. And it's worth playing around with that because. Um, when, if you've never had a lane keeping system before, um, it can be a bit unnerving. You you know, you, you can feel the car um, wanting to stay in lane and sometimes you're intentionally trying to move out of lane. So I think it's important that you practice and you adjust those settings to whatever suit you. Uh, driver alert, obviously just warning when you should be taking brakes. Um, and I think the rest are fairly self-explanatory, although it is worth having a quick look at cruise control because you have different options. You can have uh, normal, adaptive, or intelligent, uh, and the manual will take you through the main differences in those features, but this is where you adjust it when you need to. Okay, so coming back out of the driver assistance uh, menus, uh, my view is quite useful because, and I particularly like this view when you're 
traveling uh, over into Europe. Uh, of course, in the UK, we use miles per hour, uh, but in Europe, they use kilometers per hour. And so with you know, making things easy for you, if you change this to the, be the main view in the center column, um, when you're driving along uh, European motorways, you can very quickly look down and make sure you aren't breaking the speed limit. Um, of course, so currently it's set to miles per hour because I'm in the UK, but you could make that uh, my view section show you anything you want to. You could be showing fuel economy if you were trying to be more efficient. Um, you could have any of these main options in the center area. Okay, so moving on up. Um, this is a trip computer, which obviously you have in almost all vehicles and certainly in most cars. Um, quite handy though, to give us an idea of the miles per gallon, uh, how many miles since the last time we reset anything, um, and obviously how many miles until we next need to refill. And a question that often comes up is, what does the miles per gallon, uh, what is the miles per gallon for the Ford Nugget? Um, our usage currently looks like it's 30.5 miles per gallon. Um, bear in mind, we live in a fairly hilly area and we are often going up and down such hills, um, which I'm sure doesn't really help the fuel economy particularly. Um, but that's our current uh, reading. And if you look at these various, you can change it. So in this case now, this is a different period of time, trip two, uh, again, um, showing us the statistics, you can reset reset the values and you can change which uh, items that you want to see on that screen um, by ticking or unticking uh, the various points. So if I move now back to the main screen uh, and now on to settings. So this is a particularly useful menu and is worth you know taking note of. Uh, in here is where you can set the nugget up to be how you like it, okay? So I'm going to start from the bottom with vehicle maintenance. Very useful. This gives you the information of how long you have got, how many miles are left before the oil will need to be changed. In this case, 8,800 miles or 256 days, whichever comes uh, sooner. Uh, it also gives you the add blue range. We currently have 2,400 miles left before we need to refill. Uh, although um, at any time you could click on add blue level, which would give you the smallest amount of um, uh, add blue that you could add or the maximum amount that would uh, be available for you to put into the tank at this present time. Uh, so that's quite useful if you're at a station that has a add blue pump as opposed to uh, just filling from containers. Um, obviously, um, just add blue um, information is just showing us that as is approximately half full at the moment. Okay, so that's really useful to know. Uh, and the but the vehicle will warn you when you're running out of add blue, and it will also tell you, uh, and it will count down and say you've got 500 miles until you you know be, before the vehicle will not work, uh, you know, 200 miles and so on. But it gives you plenty of warning, and you will have plenty of op opportunity to fill up with add blue uh, to make sure that the van obviously continues to work without any disruption. So at the bottom of the menus underneath add blue you also have a tire pressure setting and as we go into there you will see that these are live pressures from each of the four wheels very useful if you uh, noticed or you were concerned about the tire pressure you can just quickly look here uh, before topping up um, so that's a pretty useful uh, page so vehicle settings again um, here you can set up whether you want it to uh, in, uh, indicate with noise when you have information coming up, what lighting settings you're going to have. Um, you can d decide how how the, how the van is uh, uh, going to lock and unlock. Um, you've got obviously the passenger airbag, which could be important if you're trying to um, carry young children, for example, on the front seat, you may need to turn that airbag off for some car seats. Um, 
remote start um, of course um, we sort of allow this and, and you set here what you'd like it to do so um, the climate control the seats how long you want those things to run for uh, and of course that comes into into full focus when you're using the four pass app which is a vlog we will be doing soon um, so wipers of course you can um, adjust the sensitivity and the controls of those uh, and they're the main settings through the vehicle page um, so moving up further th so this is another area where you can adjust the driver assist so you've seen all of these before because of course they have a direct um, avenue off the main screen as we showed earlier in the vlog back to our display where we can choose whether it's in English uh, and here is where you would change your units of measurement should you be traveling in Europe um, then by simply clicking here everything will switch across and now if we come back to the my view page you will see that things are in kilometers per hour which would be ideal if we are traveling in Europe uh, and it just takes all of the thought out of it as all of our um, uh, parameters are now in um, the um, European settings and that just makes life a lot easier when you travel on the continent and trying to work out how far things are and particularly when then using things like adaptive cruise control because of course you can then set it in kilometers per hour and that will help you on the motorways okay so finally let's go back into the um, settings page and just make sure we've seen everything so again in the information uh, settings um, this just again gives us more flexibility on which alerts and hazards etc that are available but you have to sign up for the forward pass uh, for that great okay so then the main things now of course um, currently I don't have my phone connected but if I did um, I would be able to make calls to um, recent uh, phone calls, I, um, favorites and so on, similar as you would do in uh, most vehicles. Um, similarly, uh, I currently do not have my radio turned on, but if I did, I would be able to come in here, uh, change all the various um, um, input settings so I could choose different wavelengths. I could also choose to connect my phone this way. Um, which is excellent as well so you can do you can control pretty much everything from the uh, steering column without having to take your hands off which is obviously very safe but i hope you've enjoyed this vlog i hope it's been useful for some of you in helping to make decisions on uh, the van but also where to find some of the particular settings where which because as i know when you first have the van it can be a bit overwhelming if you need any further information don't hesitate to contact us and if you like what we're doing, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing. See you next time.